What's up guys? Welcome back to my channel. So today I'm doing a nail tech video part two. You guys were super excited about the second installment of this video and then also a video about nail school. So I had to go ahead and get this up for you guys. I am just going to go through your questions from my last video, the nail tech experience. I'm going to go through your questions that you left for me and kind of hit all of the areas that you guys asked about. So if you guys are interested in learning more about my experience traveling um, with nails, my nail school experience and things like that, then just keep watching. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and just answer some of the outright questions that you guys had and then I'll kind of elaborate. So let's see, let's see, let's see. Um, someone wanted to learn more about the traveling side of my nail business and kind of the pros and cons of working in a salon versus going in alone and traveling. So that's a really good question. I told you guys in my nail tech experience video how I had went through several salons and kind of had issues um, along the way with several different things and I just felt that it was right for me to kind of test the waters and kind of go it alone. Um, you definitely, I would say if you're just starting out in the nail industry, it's going to be more beneficial to you to kind of get your foot um, into a salon first. Um, I just think that because you're going to want to have that hands-on experience that you didn't learn in nail school. So you definitely want to get that experience in working with other people, kind of learning the trends, learning how customers really like things. When you're in the salon setting, you have so many people thrown at you um, from different backgrounds, wanting different things, and you just have different situations that you kind of have to deal with. So it's good to get that experience firsthand before you try to go it alone. Um, it also helps you to be around people that have been in the industry for so many years. I loved being able to talk to um, different people that have been doing nails for 25 years back when I was working at one of the salons. It was cool to get their perspective and to kind of learn from things that they've been through. So I would definitely suggest um, starting out in a salon, whether that be just a nail salon or a full service hair, makeup, whatever salon. That's definitely going to help you out. But as far as the pros and cons go, it's definitely um, a pro to me to be out on your own because you have that freedom. You can set your own business hours. You can set your own time. You can go in on a Saturday or not go in on a Saturday. It's completely up to you. You can take the appointments. Um, just around your own schedule. If you have a family, you have maybe another career, just something else that you're doing, you can definitely kind of stack your appointments around your life that you already have. And that's not something you can do at a salon. Um, at a salon, you're going to be um, expected to be there from opening and closing, all the days that they're open maybe. Like you're going to be expected to be there when clients are at the salon. So that's definitely something to think about if you are a super busy person already or you just have... Um, things that you're already responsible for. It's definitely probably a pro for you to go it alone. Um, also, if you are someone who wants to be able to set your own prices and offer your own specific kind of services, I know um, one of the salons I was at kind of, it was, that salon was just a horrible experience. If you guys have not watched my first video, I will link that one down below. But I think it was the third salon that I worked at. Um, I was not able to, keep my prices where I set them and my boss was also wanting to change how I did my services and she wanted to add things and take away things and she wanted me to change my technique so if you guys do not want to deal with that kind of situation definitely it's a pro to go it alone um, if you are working under somebody in a salon then you're gonna have to bend to their will a little bit you're gonna have to do things the way that the salon does things all the other um, professionals that work there, they might already have like a groove, um, kind of the way that they do things. So you're going to have to bend to that a little bit if you do choose to go into a salon. But I will say a pro of a salon is you are probably going to be able to be found a lot easier at the beginning of your career. Um, you don't already have a clientele built up, so your job is to get your name out there. It is a little bit easier when you are attached to a salon because it gives people an address to go to. It gives people a phone number. They know exactly when you're going to be open, when you're going to be there. And it helps to build your clientele because you're already going to have clients from other people coming in for other services that can potentially meet you and become your clients. 
The second salon that I worked at, it helped in the beginning um, being there because it was a full service salon. We did hair, nails, makeup, tanning, massage, pretty much everything. So you had so many other people coming in for services that then found me and I was able to become their full-time nail tech. So it's definitely beneficial in the beginning, I would say, if you're looking to build that clientele a little bit easier. But if you're the one that wants to go out there and kick ass and find your clients and do what you have to do, go for it. Go it alone. I would definitely support that 100%. Now, a few of you asked about nail prices and then also what to actually bring with you, like what you would have in your nail train case. Um, I have two nail train case videos where I go through the entire thing with you guys. I will link them both down below. One was last year, one was earlier this year. It's a little bit more updated. Um, I would, I would have everything that you would have in your salon. So this is for people that are going it alone, that are traveling on location for nails. I would suggest that you do disposable everything that you possibly can. So I like to use disposable files, disposable buffers, cuticle sticks, um, the cotton rounds, the uh, lint-free wipes, all those kind of things, and then like pedicure slippers. Um, you can even use the paper like manicure towels that you use once and throw away. I would use disposable everything when you're on location. First of all, this is just going to abide by kind of sanitation rules by your state. They're going to be different, but it just ensures that you're doing things the right way. You don't have to worry about um, sanitizing all of your equipment after every single service, after every client, if you have like a big party you're doing. Um, yeah, just different things like that. And also, if they are foam or wooden, they're going to be a little bit lighter in your train case. So you don't have to be weighing it down with so much metal um, implements. So that's a quick tip um, to make your load a little bit lighter when you're traveling. Because I know sometimes you have to walk a long way for these jobs. So um, also, I would say to kind of bring a variety, a basic variety of nail polish. So. I like to bring a white because people love French manicures on their nails and their toes. Um, a white, a light pink, a medium pink, and a red polish. Everybody loves red, everybody loves pink. And for pink, you wanna have a few different shades. So I like to bring a light pink, medium pink, sometimes a dark pink. Um, and then I like to bring a black and a silver because I love to do nail art and those are my basic colors for nail art, black, silver, and white. I can kind of get away with doing any nail art with those colors. Um, but also you want to make sure you know what event you're going to. So if it is a wedding, you want to bring more kind of bridal, nudes, um, cream colors, and just like lighter shades for your bridal party and for your bride because they tend to want more neutral palettes. If you're going to something like a big party, um, something with younger um, attendees, they might want some color, they might want some neons, they might want some like glitter. You just really have to know what your client wants, do your research beforehand so you'll know what to bring. Also a tip that I have for you guys, I always bring hand sanitizer with me just because you may not always be around a sink whenever you're traveling to these different venues. Um, but for pedicures, if you are someone who is offering pedicures, but you're offering waterless pedicures like me, I don't actually bring a basin and fill it with water and do the whole shebang when I'm doing pedicures. I just like to bring these really, I don't have one on me right now, I would show you guys. It's this kind of really big um, wet towelette that I have. I had some from Jamberry that worked amazing, but they're just sanitizing wipes, but they fold out to kind of be like this big, and they're perfect to do pedicures with. So I like to cleanse my client's feet with them completely, so you make sure that their feet are completely clean. I then go in and spritz them with my spray alcohol as well. This just makes sure that their feet are super clean, it's super sanitary, and then you can go in with all of your products. And when you're um, doing their foot massage with lotion, you don't have to worry about any ickiness. So that's definitely a quick tip if you're doing like waterless pedicures. As far as prices go, this is something that's going to be dependent on where you live. So I live in North Georgia. So 
I am going to be pricing mine a little differently than someone who lives in the middle of LA County. Um, their prices just might be different depending on the demographic that's there. Um, I would suggest if you really have no idea, go to other nail salons and other full service salons in your area and ask about their prices, ask about their services. That way you'll get an idea of what that demographic in your area is buying, what they want, and kind of what they are used to spending. That's not to say that you have to spend the same as the other salons around you because that's not true at all. But say they're, say all the clientele in your area are used to paying $10 for a manicure. I would never just price my manicure at $10, but say they're used to spending $10. If you come in and you're going to spend, if you come in and you're going to charge $35 for a manicure, it might be a little slow to build your clientele. They're not used to paying those prices. So it's just something to kind of get a range just so you'll know like, oh, this is kind of a ballpark that they're used to spending and then you can judge that way. But you definitely wanna make sure that you are covering the cost of your products that you're using and your time and your effort and just everything that goes into traveling, you wanna make sure that you budget your prices accordingly. So if I am traveling super far away, I will charge a travel fee if it's outside of a certain mile radius of my home. I will charge a travel fee that is completely separate from the prices. And then I charge per service. So I don't charge per hour or anything like that. You guys could do that um, if it's kind of going to be like an all day thing. But I normally do bridal parties. So I like to charge per service and then add on the travel fee at the end. So someone else also asked how I actually prepare for the service when I'm on site. So I'll kind of run you through really quickly my process of what I do. So I have the event. I travel to the event from my home and I have my full train case in tow. And then I have another bag that just holds extra towels and things like that. If I'm going to be doing a big event, I'll make sure to carry lots of extras. So if it's going to be a bigger bridal party, then I'll know to carry lots of extras. Um, I travel out to the location and I do my setup time. I give myself 10 to 15 minutes of setup time just to allow everyone to show up. Um, I like to find a table and chairs, preferably. A lot of times you're not going to have the perfect setup, so you just have to go with it. You can be sitting on the floor and have their feet in your lap or their hands in your lap. You can be working on them while they're getting their hair and makeup done. It just really depends, but I mostly like to find a table and two chairs. Um, I lay out my manicure towels so I don't have to worry about any spillage and then I set up all of my products. So I have my acetone set up for nail polish remover, I have my spray alcohol, I have my cuticle remover, cuticle oil, lotion, things like that. I line up all of my polish options so all of them have kind of an idea of which one they want before they even sit down with me because they can be choosing. Um, I have top coat, base coat, I have my cleanup brush, you can have all of my implements. So I have my disposable files, cuticle sticks, buffers, I have my clippers, um, I have pedicure slippers if I'm doing a pedicure, and my cotton, um, and I also keep a baggie with me, I keep a plastic baggie with me as my trash cans because you may not always have access to a trash can where you're at and you really don't want to leave your garbage at the event, especially if it's in a bridal suite for a wedding. I don't like to leave my own garbage so I always take it with me. I just keep a plastic bag in my train case and I will just put everything in it as I go through each service. And I clean up after every single client, sanitize my area, and then put down all new equipment and start over for the next person. Now, as far as my experience in nail school, I chose a school, um, the program was strictly advanced um, nail care. It was for me to get my nail tech license. It was going to be a entire year long course, but one semester was actually in the classroom hands-on and the next semester was just online work. So. It was super, super simple. I just had four months of actually being there on, cam <coughs> on campus. Um, I had a really, really small class. It was 11 girls, including me. And we were in there Tuesday through Friday, eight hours every single day. We had lists of things that we had to accomplish. So we had to do a certain set of manicures for that semester, certain set of pedicures, um, entire acrylic sets, jail nails, nail art, um, I mean, the whole thing, we had a whole list for the semester that you had to accomplish in those four months, so that gave us a goal. 
Um, every single day we would come in and we would have like book time where we would go over assignments, we would do projects and workbooks. We would watch videos, documentaries, um, just presentations. We would just do kind of the basic school stuff. This is just where you learn the ins and outs of nail anatomy, um, of diseases and disorders of the nail. You learn about the skin. Um, just a lot of things like that. You learn about sanitation, kind of the boring stuff. Um, and then later in the semester, we learned about actually like hands-on, like acrylic, what it's made up of, gel, what it's made up of. Um, just your technique was kind of, at the end of sem the semester, you were kind of working on your technique. I remember we would start class at 8 a.m. and we would immediately start jumping on our list of things that we had to complete. So we would go in at 8 a.m. and be doing pedicures on each other. We would swap back and forth and just do pedicures back and forth. We would do manicures. Um, we used each other as our clients. We also got to invite uh, friends and family into the classroom as our clients and we did discounted services on them. It was a really cool learning experience because you were able to practice on people with different um, skin types, nail types, just different things like that. So that was super helpful. Um, I was a big nail art nut in my class. I was probably one of the only ones that really was into nail art. Um, it wasn't any kind of requirement to learn how to do any nail art at all. Um, and my teacher kind of got after me a few times because I was so concerned with like doing new nail art techniques and I would just doodle away. Um, so she kind of had to wrangle me back in to do the, mo the more boring stuff. But I definitely loved learning nail art and teaching other people. I actually taught a few of the people in my class how to do 3D nail art. So that was pretty cool. I'm gonna have to show you guys in a video how I do a few of the simple like techniques with 3D acrylic nail art. I think that would be really cool. But yeah, um, it was a really cool experience. It was a very different mix of girls. Some of them were, there was like very few in there that were like me and just wanted to be a nail tech. Majority of them really were just in there because they needed to pass a semester to go on to the full cosmetology course. They were just taking the nail class um, to go along with their cosmetology. So I was one of the very few that was super interested in nails. Um, so that was kind of strange, but I loved it the same. I still got to hone my technique. And as soon as we got into our last couple weeks of nail school, I already had a salon job nailed down. So I was super, super excited about that. Now, this school was in Georgia, so I don't know what all nail schools around the country are gonna be like for you guys, but I know we had a short time span and we just had to go through as many of the services as we possibly could. Um, we did acrylic nails. That was kind of the hardest thing, I think, for a lot of people, but it was like super, super hard for me. Um, I kind of hated doing it. I didn't like all the chemical um, aspect of it, but you had to learn how to do it. So, so yeah, I'm so grateful that I am out on my own now and I am not offering acrylics. It was just not something that I was passionate about and I absolutely love working on the natural nails. So no more acrylics for me and I'm so excited about that. So I think I've rambled enough for this video. Um, if you guys found this helpful, please give this video a thumbs up and make sure you're subscribed. I am almost at a thousand subscribers, which is blowing my mind right now, but yeah, if you guys love these kind of videos, please hit that subscribe button. I would love you forever. Also, if there is anything that I did not hit in this video that you're still wondering about, please let me know in the comments and I will do another video. There's so much more I could talk about with you guys. But yeah, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye guys.